column statement is locate the centroid y bar of the channel's cross sectional area. So we see that the centroid is located somewhere along this point here, um, point C. This is the centroid. One thing to keep in mind is the centroid of an area does not have to be within that object itself. So we're supposed to solve for this y bar here. So remember the previous equations that we used to solve for the centroid of areas. Um, now in this case, since we know the areas of these simpler geometries, which are just rectangles, which is length times width, um, instead of integrating, we already know the formula for the for the areas here. So these equations actually simplify further. So for the x bar is the sum of the x i which is the centroid with respect to each of its composite areas times that specific area of the compo of that smaller simpler geometry divided by the sum of all the areas and the same is with the y bar so the, here are the equations to solving these um the centroids when it comes to these simpler geometries you know squares rectangles triangles and so forth. So let's go ahead and just number each composite area. So this rectangle will be rectangle number one. This will be number two. This would be number three. So now since we see the centroid, the reference point of Y bar is with respect to the top portion of this body itself. So this is where we're going to be basing off all of our calculations with respect to the top portion of this. So for portion the composite area number one the centroid or the y bar of this specific area will be right at the center so we see this rectangle has a, a length of six inches so it's go actually going to be three inches with respect to the top right so three inches this is our um, y bar for this specific area here so it's going to be three inches times the area of this one. So area is um, six inches times two inches here. So six times two, 12 inch squared. So that's for area number one. So now we add area number two here. So we see the center of this rectangle is going to be here. We see that the height of this rectangle is two inches. So it's going to be one inch from the top portion here. So one inch, that will be our Y bar here, times the cross-sectional area of this um, rectangle. So it's going to be 12 inches times two inches. So it's going to be 24 inch squared. Plus the third area is going to be basically the same as area number one because they're the same. So it's going to be three inches from the top. So here's the center of that rectangle. It's going to be three inches here times the cross-sectional area, which is two inches times six, 12 inch squared. Then divide that by the sum of all the area. So the area the cross-sectional area of the first rectangle is 12 inch squared, 12 inch squared, plus the cross-sectional area of number two is 24 inch squared, plus another 12 inch squared. Just calculate that and we get our Y bar being equal to two inches. And this is the Y bar that we saw for the centroid. So this is where the centroid is located with respect to the y-axis here of this composite area. And so this is how you solve the centroid of composite areas. So whenever you have a structure or cross-sectional area that you could tell is composed of um, multiple or simpler geometries, um, you're actually able to use these um, simplified formulas. If, instead of using integrals, you just use the sum of the centroids of each specific um, simpler geometry times that area divided by the sum of areas. Um, now, one thing by inspection, when it comes to the centroid with respect to the x-axis here, 
we see since it's symmetric, the centroid is going to actually be um, the x bar equal to zero with respect to this axis here. Um, you could tell just by the the geometry since it's um, symmetric. Now you could go ahead and do the the calculations for the x bar and just test that out. Um, the more you do this, the more better intuition you have of this, um, but it all comes with practice.